Soon after meeting Loanna, one of the first things she asked me was if I'd like to travel with her back to Australia. I immediately said yes, but she wanted to get there as sustainably as possible. There was only one option, the bicycle. We researched the physical route, but no amount of preparation could prepare us for the mental journey we were about to undertake. As we travelled through Europe, everything we saw confirmed our decision to cycle. The Alps may have been high, but our mood was even higher. Dedicated bike lanes guided us safely alongside the traffic. But we decided to continue, and so made our way across Greece and into Turkey. And then we arrived in the stunning centre and found Cappadocia. It's incredible! It may have been unbelievably beautiful, but we weren't the first to stumble upon it. We were in the middle of the Turkish tourist loop. We decided to get away from the tourist trail, so continued east towards Iran. By this time, it was 45 degrees before midday. Fucking boiling in this fucking horrible outfit. I didn't want to pedal the whole way to Australia. All I could think about was getting enough liquid into me to survive until evening. But the problems facing the locals put mine into perspective. With local fears about global warming and climate change, it's confirmed for us our decision to cycle and not fly back to Australia. We wanted to stay longer, but were arrested after photographing a mural on a university wall. Then, when we filmed a military procession, we suddenly found a gun pointing at us. It was time to make a very quick exit into Pakistan. <laughs> So it's basically just men, men, men everywhere. And every single one of them when they pass by have a very good long stare at me. By the time you're really tired and you've done lots of cycling, you know, you've had maybe 300 people trying to talk to you and a lot of the time it's with only sexual intent and it does become quite draining after a while. Cycling through Pakistan was the hardest part of the entire expedition. At that point, the environment came very low on my priority list. We needed to reclaim our sanity. Would India, our next destination, be the place to do it? Our first thought was to get away from the hot, dusty flatlands. So we turned north and climbed into the foothills of the Himalayas. And then an email from Australia arrived, telling us of a ship that would take us from Mumbai to Singapore. We had to leave in a hurry and head down into the dusty lowlands. We made it as far as Delhi before the pollution started getting to us. And to the bicycles. Kev and I have had earache, constant sore nose, swollen glands, and we don't have a cold, we don't have any illness. It's just, that's how polluted it is here in Delhi. It's quite scary that people have to live here. We finally escaped from the hazy, polluted capital and continued south towards Mumbai and our ship. The sea voyage gave us time to reflect, to gather our thoughts, to recover our strength and to relax for most of the time. As we approached Southeast Asia, we went on to pirate alert. They are heavily armed, machine, machine guns, and, and they are dangerous. So if they are bored and we have nothing to do, then just uh, 
don't try to, to be a hero or something. Well, we finally made it through Immigration and Customs and we're here in Singapore. This place is clean, it's modern, it's full of shopping centres and everybody's got a mobile phone. This is not India. We spent many hours and many days searching for a ship that would take us the last leg to Australia. Speak to you soon. Bye! Yay! We finally got a ship to Australia. Such a relief. We've been here for so many weeks and so in four days time on the 31st of March we are setting sail from Singapore all the way to Brisbane. And within a few days we found ourselves approaching the port and my family. Suddenly we were back in a country where people knew about environmental issues, where they had time to worry about the state of the world. There was time for us to think too. The world isn't as black and white as it seemed from the luxury of our English base, and concern for the environment doesn't even squeeze onto the agenda for most people. We'd learnt a lot about ourselves. We found it hard, but really, we had it pretty easy. When the surroundings got tough, we could just pedal a little faster. We had an escape route. The people living there didn't. And then it was nearly over. After cycling through the stunning Australian countryside, we arrived in Sydney. It was the first time I'd seen the bridge. And it meant one thing. We'd made it 12,000 kilometers through 16 countries over 15 months. Now that I'm back here with friends and family around me, it feels as though it was a dream. But I managed it somehow to bike to Oz.